Today's session is going to be presented by Lindsay Doubledyce, uh, who is the Assistant Director of Graduate Recruitment at the George Washington University. Lindsay is going to talk to us uh, today about U.S. graduate arts programs. She's going to discuss at length the tips and best practices for applying to graduate arts programs in the United States. Uh, before we ask Lindsay to begin her presentation, a small brief about Education USA. Education USA is a U.S. Department of State funded network uh, which, where the team of advisors working together give out current comprehensive and accurate information and assist students who are applying, looking to apply to schools in the U.S. So we help you with all your admission centric concerns. Uh, with this, I would like to uh, hand over charge to Lindsay. Lindsay, if you can please begin your presentation now. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, good afternoon there. It's a little early in the morning here, so just as a preface, I apologize in advance if you hear my husband or my dogs as they're getting ready for their day. Um, but thank you so much for joining us again. Um, again, my name is Lindsay Dubeldyce. Um, I work within uh, the George Washington University's Columbian College of Arts and Sciences. Um, a little bit about my background. Um, I have been working within <clears throat> uh, arts recruitment for the last eight years. Um, I started my career working with the Corcoran College of Art and Design, working undergraduate admissions, and now for the last two years uh, within the GW School and their Corcoran School of the Arts and Design um, for the last two years, uh, working within their graduate programs, working with their MA and MFA uh, programs in admissions and recruitment. Um, so my presentation today is going to be kind of broken up into a few different sections. First, I'm going to talk to you about um, how to choose a program and some of the things that you might want to consider as you begin that search process. Uh, and then we'll go into some of the, the good and helpful tips for once you've started the application. Uh, what are some things that you can do to make the process easier on yourself? What are some things you can do to make the process easier on the admissions committees that you're applying and make yourself, uh, show yourself in the best light um, as you go through that process, which can be a little bit confusing and at times a little bit stressful. Uh, so to begin, you know, why, uh, why should you apply? for a Master of Arts or a Master of Fine Arts. Um, the big thing is going to be to look at which type of program you're going to be applying to. Are you looking at a Master of Arts? Are you looking at a Master of Fine Arts? Um, are you looking for that more intensive studio-based program um, or something a little bit more on the academic side? Those are going to be definitely be things to consider. There will be schools that will offer similar programs in each type of degree. So kind of similarly to how you would look for a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Fine Arts, you would take some of those same things into consideration. Um, one of the big reasons that students will go to graduate school for arts programs is to kind of become a part of a bigger community of artists and designers to give themselves a really immersive experience in that way, um, to be able to get some critical feedback in a, in a serious environment from not only their peers, but also professional practicing artists and faculty members um, that are leaders in their field, um, and to really kind of take a serious look at their work um, and push themselves to develop um, as artists and uh, art educators uh, much further. Um, you'll be able during that time to kind of focus, focus exclusively on your work um, and really expand your critical vocabulary. Um, there's a lot of internal searching that kind of goes on uh, during these, these graduate programs. You're really able to kind of take a look at your work and the reasons why you're making your work, what's influencing your work, and um, really explore those ideas and kind of flush them out much more further. Um, again, in networking opportunities, uh, working with your peers and working with faculty members and kind of being able to expand your horizons. Um, depending on the type of school that you go to, you'll, you can end up in a school with a large program uh, where you have a very wide variety of, of people to network with, or you may go to a very intimate program where you're able to develop relationships um, much more deeply on a one-on-one -on -one level um, that can help you uh, moving forward with your work. And then another large reason is for students that are interested in teaching, um, specifically at the university level. Um, a Master of Fine Arts is considered a terminal degree within the creative arts disciplines. Um, so that does prepare you to teach at the university level, which I know is an, of interest to many students. When to apply? Um, there really is no best time to apply. Um, you know, it's really going to depend on you and your level of work and your um, your sort of preparation to um, 
to, to go back into school. You know, uh, graduate, going to graduate school for art is a really intense experience. It requires a lot of discipline and serious commitment to your artistic growth. Some students are ready for that immediately following their undergrad. Um, some students do require a little bit of extra time and we do find that it's common for students to go out and get some real world experience. Some people benefit from that, um, getting industry work, exhibiting a little bit more, um, going through that, that grant process. Um, some people need that little bit of extra time um, to, to just really kind of hone their work and really sort of find themselves a little bit more. Um, you know, an artistic career outside of the academic setting can be really beneficial, especially to applications for some very, very competitive programs. Some schools will require that you actually spend some time away uh, from, from the academic setting prior to uh, starting a, a graduate program. Um, but you should be prepared to kind of adjust your timeline. Um, you know, you might start applying now and it might take a few years to get accepted into that program that's going to be perfect for you. Um, so definitely go in with an open mind and um, manage those expectations. Um, some really big factors to consider. Um, first is going to be the type of program. Again, like I mentioned earlier, are you looking for a, an MFA program, a Master of Fine Arts, something where you're doing very studio intensive work or you're looking for an MA program. Um, you're going to want to think about the type of experience that you want to have and any of your specific goals within your work um, and within your career as well. Um, some of these programs are going to focus on fundamentals. They're going to focus on techniques and more traditional art making. Other programs are going to focus on uh, more conceptual work and research based ideas. Um, some have very dis discipline specific programs where you're going to be doing one area and one area only and then others are a little more interdisciplinary. So I think one of the things, if you're going to take one thing away from this presentation is that you really need to research each program individually because no two programs are going to be the same. No two Master of Fine Arts in Fine Arts are going to be the same. Um, you may go to look at a school like the Maryland Institute College of Art where their fine arts programs are going to go into very specific areas. You're going to go into their Hofburg School of Painting, you're going to go into their School of Sculpture. Uh, whereas at GW, our Master of Fine Arts program is a much more interdisciplinary program. So while you may come in with a focus in one area, the program is going to allow you to explore a lot of different areas and, and encourage that. So kind of, again, depending on what your interests are and where you see yourself taking your work, um, you'll want to definitely consider that um, in, your, in your search and in your application process. Um, another important thing is going to be the faculty members. Um, the best programs are going to have faculty members that are active in the art community. They're currently practicing artists. They're very involved in the local art scenes and uh, both nationally and internationally. Um, they're going to be working as you know, working artists, curators, critics. Um, so you want to make sure that you're taking a look at some of those specific faculty members. There may be a specific faculty member that you are really looking forward to working with. Um, so definitely do some research on them. Reach out to them and contact them if you are thinking about their program. Um, they're going to be interested in speaking with prospective students and uh, learning more about you and your interests and how um, you might be able to help enhance their program. Um, if you want to work with a specific faculty member, one thing I do recommend also is reaching out and making sure that they are going to be teaching in the semesters that you would be interested in enrolling. Um, you know, and they're not going to be out on sabbatical or anything like that. You don't want to have that sort of disappointment once you've already made that commitment to a school. Um, a third is going to be facilities. Um, some students, that's a big deal for them. Some students, it's, it's not really a big deal, but um, you know, if you have the opportunity to visit a campus, a lot of campuses are going to have a virtual tour for you to kind of see what their spaces are like. Um, definitely take advantage of that. You want to make sure if you're working in a specific discipline, do they have the equipment that you're going to need? Um, for studio spaces, do you work very large scale? You want to make sure that you're going to have enough of a studio space to really uh, facilitate the type of work that you're doing. Um, you don't want to go somewhere where they're only offering a very small studio space and you like to work very large. Um, or you know, think about your the hours that you keep. Um, you know, are there studio spaces available um, in the in the evenings or late at night? I know a lot of our students like to work through the night um, and really take advantage of our 24 hour uh, studio hours. Um, you know, what what type of campus is going to allow that, um, and are they going to be able to accommodate you and your work style? Cost, 
always a huge issue. Um, you know, research any costs associated with your program. Take a look at the number of credits that are required um, and the, the cost per credit and any other um, outside fees and things that are going to be associated with that. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit more uh, further along, but once you find out you know, sort of the cost associated, reach out and find out about any sort of department specific uh, scholarships that may be available, any sort of dedicated funding to that program. That's going to be really helpful. Um, depending on the type of school, you may have um, certain programs that will have kind of a dedicated scholarship line for their students. Um, some schools are going to be able to offer a little bit more than others. Um, I know at GW, we definitely, each of our departments have their own sort of scholarship budgets. Um, and then we offer some larger university-wide scholarships. Um, for example, you know, we're currently working with students through our global initiative. So students from India, in addition to any sort of scholarships that they might receive from the programs, they would also qualify for some additional funds um, from the university at large. So make sure you're doing a little bit of research to sort of see where, um, where those, those scholarship funds and um, might be available because they, they're definitely there and available to students. Um, and again, of course, depending on the school will vary in amount. Um, the size of the program is going to be something also to consider. Again, you know, you're going to have some schools that are going to be much larger programs, some schools that are going to be much smaller. Um, there are pros and cons to both. You know, a larger school, you're going to have a larger audience to show your work to. You're going to be able to get a lot more feedback from uh, from different audiences. Um, they may have some more opportunities for visiting artists and different uh, interdisciplinary activities. A smaller community, you're going to get a much more intimate and intense experience. Um, a lot more one-on-one -on -one, um, attention from faculty. But again, that's going to be a slightly smaller audience to draw on uh, inspiration from um, and critique from. But that, um, you know, that's definitely something for you to consider and in looking at your own practice and again, your goals, what, um, what's going to be the best fit for you. Location and community, um, thinking about where you want to not only spend the years that you're in the program, but then where do you want to end up after the program? Um, think about the community and the network that you want to build during your, your studies. Will it be valuable if you end up relocating? Will it be, um, you know, will it be beneficial to you no matter where you land uh, after your studies? Um, you know, a dense urban area, kind of like GW, we're located right in the middle of Washington, D.C. Um, it tends to offer a more vibrant and active artist community. Um, can be a little bit more expensive to live in um, and can be a little overwhelming for some people, to be quite honest. Um, schools in less dense, dense environments do tend to have a little more space available to them. Um, there can be less distraction. So if you need something where you need to be focused on your studio time, uh, that can be helpful. And then the length of the program, um, that's going to tie back to everything. It's going to tie back to cost. That's going to tie back to what are your ultimate goals? How long do you want to spend in a program? Um, most of these programs are going to take two to three years full time. Um, you know, there are some low residency programs that require you to be on site for a few semesters um, or in intermittently throughout the year. They can, they can take up to four years to complete. Um, so it's, it's going to depend on there, there are going to be a lot of different options about a lot of different schools um, with full-time and part-time study. Uh, and, and again, you know, thinking about how long do you want to spend on this degree, how many credits is the degree, that's also going to add to the length of time, um, another, yet another factor to consider. Uh, so the next part of this presentation is going to kind of talk to you about once you've started that application process or you're getting ready to apply, what are um, some of our best recommendations and tips that we've kind of acquired over the years as an office. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about um, our experience at GW and kind of the admissions experience there um, and how that can kind of relate to you um, applying to other schools as well. So there are two things that you can take away from this. The second thing is going to be plan ahead. So make sure that you are um, allowing yourself enough time to prepare, and you're also giving your recommenders enough time, you're giving the admissions committee enough time to, to really help you. Um, the vast majority of mistakes and missteps are possible to resolve. You know, we can find, you can, we can help you with a portfolio upload issue, we can help you find a transcript, test scores can be resent, um, but a lot of these problems can't happen if you wait until the very last possible moment to do that. So really planning ahead is going to be your key to 
submitting the strongest possible application. Um, you know, allow yourself the time to work on it. This is a huge decision, uh, both for your professional life and financially, applying to graduate school and attending a graduate school. So really give yourself the time to submit the strongest possible application. Um, make sure you are taking the time to research all of the requirements, research the programs, make sure that you're only applying to programs that are really gonna fit your, your best interests. Um, you know, be aware of all of those application requirements and deadlines. They are going to vary wildly by school. Um, I wish that there was a, uh, like a common application for the graduate programs, but there just aren't. Um, all of the programs are gonna be very, very different. Um, which is a good thing because it does give you a lot of different options and allows you to really kind of personalize that experience. Um, but really make sure that you're paying attention to see if programs have any unique requirements um, that you might not be aware of or that other schools may not require a certain type of personal statement or they have very specific portfolio requirements. Really make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, We'll give you some specific guidance later in the presentation about um, recommendations and test scores and things like that. Um, but just making sure that you're not um, leaving things to the last minute. You know, there are some programs that will allow for um, who will allow for some late materials to be submitted and things like that. There are other schools that are very, very strict about their deadline. They're receiving hundreds or thousands of applications, and they have to be very strict. So don't gamble on um, on the hope that you might be able to submit something late really make sure you're giving yourself enough time to fully prepare and submit that best possible application. When you're looking for specific program requirements, a lot of schools are gonna have a similar page to what we have at GW. Um, this is a snapshot from our graduate program finder. Um, you log onto our website, you can filter the programs and results based on school, based on area of interest, um, and it'll give you all of the specific application deadlines and program requirements for all of each of the programs. Um, a lot of schools are gonna offer a similar resource. So this is probably one of the easiest ways to go on and keep track of what schools will require um, and what those specific application requirements are. Um, at GW, you know, just within the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, we have over a hundred different graduate programs. Um, so our requirements vary wildly. Um, and within the arts programs, they're gonna have some of the most specific requirements because they're not only considering your, you know, your past academic performance, some of them are gonna be considering standardized test scores, but they're also looking at those portfolios and some of your artist statements and things like that. So using, taking advantage of these resources while you're starting that application process um, is really valuable. Um, and just to kind of give you a little bit of a behind the scenes glance at how a lot of the, these admissions offices operate, especially at this time of year, um, it can be definitely very crazy in our offices. Um, and, and this is just kind of to give you some, some tips for, for dealing with and, and working with your, um, your admissions office. So just to give you an idea, we are expecting over 7,000 graduate applications this year. So that's over 15,000 transcripts that are gonna be coming through our office with about 10 to 12 staff members working to process that. Um, so you, know, you can assume that these ratios are pretty representative of a lot of the institutions you're applying to. You're gonna be getting a very high volume of uh, paper traffic, of email traffic, of phone traffic. Um, you know, and we are obviously so happy to help and, and work with you through the process, but it is important for you to take some initiative and do a little bit of research um, before reaching out with questions. You know, if it's something that can be easily researched, a broad question is gonna give you a broad answer, unfortunately, um, at, at this, especially at the, the busy um, early spring time of year. Um, so again, you know, just making sure that you're thoroughly reviewing all of, the, all of your questions and all of the, the requirements. If you do have questions, throw them all in one email so we can give you all of the information that you need at one time um, so that we can be um, as, as efficient as possible and you're able to get all of your questions answered. Um, you know, it's at this time of year, it can take a little bit longer to hear back from certain offices. Usually we try to get back to students within one business day. It can take two to three business days at some time. So give a little bit of time and then politely follow up after. Um, and make sure you're reading all of your emails and notices thoroughly uh, before responding back. You know, we're not gonna tell you that there's a problem with your application without also instructing you on how to resolve that. Um, so just make sure that you're kind of following through and really paying attention to some of those things and you will be 
a favorite applicant of any admissions office. Um, recommendation letters are something that can be really important and really helpful for um, arts programs. They can sometimes help programs sort of delineate between a student that they that is kind of on the cusp. Do we think that this student is going to be successful here? Having a strong letter of recommendation can definitely um, push it push a student over the edge um, into a positive admissions decision. Um, so make sure that you are picking recommendation recommenders that know you well and can really speak to your potential in graduate study that know a little bit about your background and have some experience with you. Um, you know, again, faculty members are very busy this time of year too, preparing for the semester. Um, you know, if you are looking at applying for next year, that end of December time is going to be heavy, heavy, heavy um, recommendation time. So make sure you give them plenty of time and any clear instructions on how to submit that letter of recommendation. Um, it's generally fine to submit more than the required number. Um, we don't, we never rec recommend submitting less, but if you have a few, like more than the two or three that are recommended that you would like to have submit letters of recommendation, send them along. They are always very helpful and enlightening. Um, you, know, you don't want to go overboard. You don't want to send us 30 letters. Um, but if you have, you know, if, if it's recommended to submit two and you have four or five people that are going to write you very strong letters of recommendation, go ahead and do that. Um, you know, if you're switching fields, if you're coming from an undergraduate degree that is slightly different than what you're looking for in graduate school, um, definitely uh, include someone that can speak to your success in the new field. Um, you know, it can be a one-time professor or an internship supervisor or someone like that that can kind of speak to you and how you can are um, adaptable and enable to switch fields. Um, when you're submitting a professional recommendation, some schools will ask that you submit maybe one academic recommendation and one professional recommendation. Uh, it's always going to be best to select a manager or a supervisor rather than having someone that's on a parallel um, colleague level with you. Um, that is something that we definitely recommend to students and sometimes students are a little bit um, unclear about. So that's always one good tip for recommendations as well. Um, GRE preparation. So at, uh, at GW, most of our MFA programs are not going to require the GRE, but there are many graduate programs that do on some of our more academic based programs, our museum studies, um, our art history programs. I've seen MFA and studio programs at other institutions that do require the GRE. Um, so just to touch on that really briefly, um, again, a lot of these program and academic or admissions requirement binders are going to give you um, GRE requirements, whether it's required and kind of minimum scores um, on those pages. Um, don't ever assume that if they ask for the GRE, you can you can uh, submit a separate test. Um, always clarify with the department or with the program um, and make sure that you're you're taking that GRE well before the application deadline. You want to make sure you're submitting um, all of your materials by the application deadline. That deadline is to have your application completed, not necessarily to start the application. Um, so you want to take that well in advance um, and allow a lot of time for that score report to arrive. Um, for our office, it usually takes at least 10 business days for us to get the even the electronic results of any scores. Um, so you'll want to kind of keep that in mind. Same thing with the, um, you want to make sure you're taking it within five years of when you're applying because they do, the test scores do expire five years um, after, after that test date. Um, if you've taken the test once and you didn't do as well as you'd like, um, feel free to retake it. Um, retaking the GRE doesn't, doesn't hurt you at all. Um, most schools, including GW, will accept the highest score that you received. Um, just make sure that your scores are going to arrive by that deadline. Uh, proof of English proficiency, so if you're taking the TOEFL or the IELTS, um, same thing, you're going to want to research um, what exams are eligible at which schools. GW does take TOEFL and IELTS. Some schools will only take TOEFL. Um, you want to research uh, what minimum scores are required to get you into each program. And if your scores aren't at that minimum level yet, does the school offer some sort of um, pre-study where you can come in? We do offer a program called Advanced English Study, um, AES, where students who have not quite met our minimum TOEFL can start a semester earlier. Um, for an intensive English language study program and then begin in their program the following semester. Um, so a lot of schools are going to offer programs like that. Um, so definitely do some research and see um, where your scores need to be so that you know 
Um, again, you want to take the exam well in advance of the deadline. Um, that definitely, you know, for a lot of international students, if you're requiring um, any sort of visa documents, those, do, you know, those test scores definitely need to be in a little bit earlier um, to allow for offices to process any documents that you might need. Um, TOEFL and IELTS scores are going to expire two years after the test date. We keep your most recent test date on file. So again, if you've taken it recently, but you're not planning on applying for a few years, you might want to reconsider taking that test. Um, so there's a lot of text on the slide, so bear with me. <laughs> um, we do get lots and lots of questions about transcripts and how to send transcripts and when we want them. Um, a lot of schools for your application process are going to be looking for um, unofficial transcripts to come in with your application. Again, that's going to vary school by school, so make sure you're looking at their admissions requirements and what they're looking for. Um, when we say official transcript, that's going to be a transcript that's sent directly from your issuing institution to us. Um, that's something that's going to come directly from them in a sealed envelope, not opened or, or uh, touched by the student. Um, for the application process, we will only look for unofficial transcripts until you've been admitted to the program. Um, so we are asking for a scanned document um, that you can upload directly onto your online application. Many, many schools are going to be the same way um, and are going to ask not for you not to send a paper transcript yet. Uh, because there is a higher chance of that getting lost in, a, in an institutional shuffle. So it's easiest if you can scan the transcript and attach it directly with your application. Um, at GW, we do require that you submit transcripts from every post-secondary institution that you've attended. So if you've transferred schools at all, you've taken a few classes somewhere, if you did a study abroad opportunity, um, you'll want to make sure that you submit transcripts from all of those schools that you've attended, even if you didn't complete a degree program there or you only took one or two classes. Um, if your school does not issue documents in English, we don't require that students submit a, um, a, a copy of your transcript that's been translated into the American education system, but we do require that they are translated into English. Um, so if your, school, if your school doesn't issue documents in English, you can obtain a credit evaluation um, from ACRA or WES. It's often a little bit cheaper than paying for a certified translator to translate things. Um, but again, these are GW's policies, so you want to make sure that you check in advance to ensure that your intended program in school will accept those evaluations in lieu of transcripts. Your resume, um, a lot of your applications are going to ask for a resume or a CV. Um, if they are asking for a resume, all of, our G all of the programs at GW will allow for a resume or a CV. Um, with a little bit of preference towards um, a resume. You're going to want it to look similar to a job resume using short, crisp language and have a clean layout with no mistakes. Um, specifically for these arts programs, you're going to want to include your education, obviously. Um, any sorts of exhibitions that you've participated in, solo or group, any sort of publications, um, awards and honors, um, any of your relevant work experience. Um, feel free to have a few people kind of take a look and review your resume. This is one thing, um, you know, your application should be something that's been completed by you and you alone, but your resume is one thing that we always tell students get some feedback on, have um, your advisors kind of help you and take a look at that and make sure that's the, the cleanest possible um, that it can be. Um, since we already have your academic transcripts, you don't have to go into a whole lot of academic detail. If there's any specific um, awards or honors that you've received, definitely highlight those on there, but you don't need to go into um, a lot of academic detail as we'll be able to see most of that information from your transcript. Uh, for the statement of purpose or artist statement, um, again, some programs are going to ask for just a statement of purpose or an artist statement. Um, some will ask for a statement of purpose and a writing sample. We'll kind of talk about a writing sample in just a few minutes. Um, but it's going to vary, again, by program. So some programs are going to have a very specific requirement as to what they want to see. Um, they may, might have some specific prompt questions. Um, even at GW, this, is, this varies. Um, we have certain programs that have specific list of questions that they want students to answer in their statement of purpose. Others kind of want a, a general um, idea of you know, your intended area of focus, why you're interested in going there, what you plan on doing with your degree, and why you're going to be um, a good fit for the school and why the school is going to be a good fit for your work. 
Um, and that's one thing that I think definitely varies from undergrad. When you're looking at undergraduate programs and you're writing an essay for an undergraduate school, it's going to be a little bit more of a focus about what the program can do for you and how it can kind of help propel you further. Um, whereas within applying to a graduate program, you're also going to want to talk about why you are going to going to help enhance that graduate community. Um, and you can highlight information that's not covered elsewhere. Um, you, know, you don't want to just summarize the rest of your application. You really want to highlight things that maybe can't be seen in a transcript or written on a resume, um, some experiences that you have and what makes you a strong candidate to work with a certain faculty member or why you are wanting to move forward with a certain type of work. Um, you know, you want to make sure you're customizing the statement. You don't just want to remove the school's name and slap another school's name in there. I can't tell you how many times at George Washington University we get personal statements written to Georgetown University um, or University of Maryland or other local schools. So you want to make sure that you're really kind of paying attention to those small details um, and, and focusing on, on really um, customizing that for each program that you're applying to. Just as the programs are going to vary, you want your, your application and statements to vary as well. Portfolios are always a big, big question. And um, again, a theme of this presentation is every school is going to be looking for something different. Um, they are, or the portfolio is generally considered the most important aspect of your application. Um, this can include a visual portfolio, or if you're interested in applying to a performing arts program, um, it can include a portfolio of audition examples and video pieces. Um, you know, top graduate programs are going to be expecting a mature and cohesive body of work. Um, a lot of times the portfolio is what can hold a student's application up. It can be part of the reason why programs will recommend that students go back out into the workforce or go back out into and, and study and create a new um, and, and, and work on their body of work before applying again um, to come back. So make sure you're researching each program's portfolio requirements really carefully and follow those instructions precisely. Every school is going to have something a little bit different. Some schools are still going to ask students to physically mail them a flash drive or a CD of their images. Other schools are going to be utilizing um, technology like Slide Room. Um, our application uh, through our TargetX platform has a specific spot for you to upload your portfolio. Um, so you really want to make sure that as you're going through that process, you're testing all of the technical components and you want to make sure that everything uploads nicely and neatly. Um, if they ask that you put everything into one PDF document or if they're asking that you submit a certain type file type, make sure that you're able to convert those and give yourself enough time to really fully test all of those components. Um, unless otherwise noted, you're really going to want to submit only high quality and completed pieces. Um, some programs might ask to see some of your process drawings or things like that, um, but for the most part, places schools are going to want to see only those high quality completed images. Um, you know, making sure again that you're following formatting for title, for size, for the number of pieces. If the school is asking you for 15 pieces, don't submit 16. Um, really make sure that you're showing that you can follow those rules um, and. You can ask to see if you're allowed to submit detail images, and if those are included in that final number, don't don't be afraid to ask those types of questions of um, of your program if they don't necessarily already spell that out for you. Make sure you're giving yourself enough time to um, photograph your work in a really professional way. Um, if you don't have the equipment to do it yourself, you need to definitely have someone help you um, take good, high quality photos because that can make a lot of difference as well um, within a portfolio. Again, making sure you're testing all of those technical components. You don't want to have to be scrambling at the last minute because your you know, WeTransfer link didn't work or the file was too big to upload um, or you require a special password or something like that. Um, make sure that you're really testing those out and making sure that that all works fine. Um, and then ask in advance for some feedback and critique. If you are working on a portfolio, um, if you're just working on a project and you want some feedback, from a school, don't hesitate to reach out to them and ask them. Uh, I know all of the schools that I've worked with are more than happy to provide some of that critical feedback and assistance for students um, to, to help them submit the strongest possible application. Um, a lot of schools are going to be sending representatives uh, to uh, 
in, in person to me. So if you have the opportunity to go to a fair where a rep from the school is going to be, definitely feel free to, to reach out to them in advance and ask if you can bring some of your work um, or having email conversations and, and transferring files back and forth um, via email. I do that pretty frequently with students um, and I know that our faculty do as well. Um, one thing I will say is if you do reach out for, for advice and feedback, make sure you take take any critique and feedback that you get and apply some of those things to your work. Um, you know, I've seen several times where we'll, I'll have a conversation back and forth with a student, offer them some, some feedback on ways that they can improve their application, only to see that their portfolio comes back the same way that they sent it to me the first time. Um, and programs will, will, will know that and they'll pay attention to that, and especially faculty. They'll, they want to see that you are open to critique and open to, um, you know, really taking that feedback and, and applying that in a positive and constructive way. So don't ignore the feedback if they're taking the time to respond back. You're obviously welcome to disagree with it politely, um, but then that may be a sign that perhaps that isn't the right program for you. And then writing samples. Um, so again, some programs may require a writing sample. Some programs won't. They'll only want to see a personal statement. Um, if the program does ask for a writing sample, uh, you'll want to look for um, submitting probably around five to ten pages, again, unless they have a, a different requirement um, of academic writing from either an undergraduate advanced seminar, a master's thesis paper. Um, these are usually used by committees to gauge your ability to conduct research and think uh, analytically, write clearly, um, and, and can be uh, provided in a, in a variety of different ways. Um, again, for uh, arts programs, it's really going to vary by the pro by the type of program. I know that our um, uh, our museum studies, our history, obviously they require uh, writing samples, but also our new media photojournalism program wants to see some examples of news writing and things like that. So making sure that you're paying attention to if they have a specific type of writing sample that they want to see as well is going to be important. So I know I've shared a lot of information with you. Here are some really great resources for you to check out um, to help with some of the things that I've mentioned, but then also to help you with your own research. College Art Association is great. Um, they're going to be able to lead you to a lot of different programs and a lot of different schools and their information. Council of Graduate Schools and GradSchools.com are great. Um, Peterson's Grad School Guide is helpful in narrowing down your search. Um, and also reaching out to, to colleges and universities. Um, for some of the financial end of things, Art School Financial Aid is helpful. FastWeb is very helpful for scholarships and doing scholarship searches outside of universities. Um, you know, apply to as many different types of scholarships and programs as you can. Um, every little small amount can help uh, cut down on that, that eventual uh, bill at the end. So I definitely recommend students look for different types of scholarships that they might qualify for and go ahead and submit that application uh, because again every little bit does help um, and the financial aid calculators can be really helpful in helping students kind of determine the actual cost of a program um, the, the the just the tuition price can be significantly lower than what other fees and things that are tacked on for students so really making sure you're looking at that total cost um, and using those those financial aid calculators can be really really helpful Now it's question time. I know that I have thrown a lot of information at you, but um, I appreciate you sticking with me. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to send them along and I will do my best to answer them. Again, um, I am representing one specific program um, or one specific university. Um, I do have some general knowledge, but a lot of times if you have specific questions about a specific application or a specific school, it's gonna be best to, to, to direct them uh, to to that institution. I know that all of my colleagues that I work with at other institutions are happy to to work with you and to kind of help you through that process, um, especially because applying to art schools is a little bit different than your traditional um, graduate school search process. So I do see a couple of questions popping up on the side here about um, three-year three -year undergraduate degrees in India versus four-year degrees. 
Um, GW does require um, that you do have a fourth year of study uh, to apply to our graduate program. That is not the case at all schools. Um, so that's going to be something that you'll want to reach out to each of your individual schools to ask about. Um, some schools are going to require that you have one year of Master studies, some are going to require that you just have an advanced diploma after the three years of school. Um, it, but GW does require um, one additional, um, either the additional advanced certificate or um, one year of master study, unfortunately. Yes, so if you have the 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 one year diploma afterwards, then we would accept that. So job opportunities in the DC area have been um, Pretty, pretty successful for our students. Again, you know, it, it's going to depend on the type of program, um, but we have one of the, we have a really great and bustling arts community. Um, it's a really accessible arts community in the DC area. Some of the, the larger and kind of more stereotypical US arts hubs like LA and New York tend to have a very tight knit and very difficult to breach art community. Um, you really have to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. Um, the DC area though is kind of brimming with startups and nonprofits. Um, we do have a lot of Corcoran and GW grads who've gone on and started their own small businesses um, within the DC area. Um, specifically, I can think of some of our um, MFA and um, art in the book students who started their own um, uh, letterpress company, um, Typecase Industries, who you can go They've worked with the White House and done projects for them and a lot of different government agencies and the, a lot of the different nonprofit agencies in the area. DC is also home to one of the largest um, museum populations in the country. Um, so we have a lot of students um, from like our exhibition design program or from our museum studies or art history who are working with the Smithsonian um, and, doing, and doing work within there. Um, DC is also in a great area where if you want to have access to some of these other larger arts areas. Um, we have a lot of students that are easily able to transfer their skills and find jobs in New York, in Philadelphia, Baltimore, Richmond. Um, you know, we're not that incredibly far from Miami. Um, so we have students that kind of go all across the country. Um, but the DC area has definitely been really, really kind um, to our, our grad students and in finding opportunities and employment uh, immediately following graduation. Uh, so at GW, our, um, our highest level for any of our arts programs is going to be the MFA programs um, and that portfolio is going to be required for those. Um, if you wanted to do um, like our history PhD and maybe have a sort of more arts focus there, um, it would be not a, you wouldn't require a visual arts portfolio, you'd be doing much more of a writing portfolio type example. Um, our specific art history degree does not go to the PhD level currently. It does stop at the MA, at the MA level. But um, again, that would be a great question to if you're finding PhD programs in an area that you're interested in. Um, that would be a great a great question to to pose to those schools. For an architecture program, um, again, I, you know, it's going to depend on the school. Um, certain schools I know, like Catholic University, um, the last time that I looked at their requirements, they have a great architecture program and they, they are looking at the GRE scores. Um, I think they're also looking at portfolio. They're, they're, they take a, a very holistic approach to their application, so they are a consideration, but it's not necessarily something that they're immediately cutting out uh, based on, they're not cutting applications based on GRE scores. Um, at GW, we offer an interior architecture and design program, and they will look at GRE scores, but that is not a major consideration um, as part of the, the admissions decision. Um, they are much more focused on um, looking at your portfolio 
Uh, they're also a first professional degree program. So for students that already have a background in architecture or design, that's not necessarily going to be the program for them. Um, but they are, they are much more focused on a portfolio and kind of the, the, um, the written aspects of um, how a student is communicating their, their kind of design vision and kind of critical um, ideas of, of design and architecture. So for when you're submitting, um, you know, an artist statement, um, it might be a good idea to, um, I always recommend that students rewrite their artist statements. Don't use your undergraduate artist statement for your graduate application. You'll want to show the, the best examples of your current writing skills. And so obviously a, a, an artist statement that you wrote while you were still an undergrad, uh, maybe in your sophomore or junior year, um, is not going to be quite as developed uh, with that sort of critical language as it would be once you've completed your, your senior year. Um, again, you know, certain programs are going to be looking very, very critically at an artist statement. Um, a lot of the um, independent art schools are going to be very, very looking a lot at, at the artist statement and wanting to see really highly developed critical language. Um, other programs may be a little more flexible in the type of language, but I always recommend that students are submitting um, the, the type of writing, especially with like an artist statement or a personal statement that reflects your highest level of um, critical language and research. Um, so usually that's going to be something that you're writing towards the end or while you're in the application process and not necessarily just pulling something from um, your undergraduate experience. Yes, so at many schools, they are more than happy to pre-review um, your, your application before submitting. Um, there are, again, you know, there are opportunities where representatives will be able to um, come to you. A lot of our, a lot of my colleagues and their, their institutions are really putting a lot of time and energy into sending representatives out um, to different countries to, um, to, to review work and to, to meet with students. Um, if you have the opportunity to visit any of these schools, um, and on their campuses, definitely bring their work. Um, if you happen to be in the States during um, one of our national portfolio days, that's a great opportunity to bring your work and have it reviewed. Um, but I always tell students, feel free to reach out via email and, and ask um, if, if a program will review your work. Because nine times out of 10, they're gonna be more than happy to kind of give you a pre-review. They won't necessarily be able to give you an admissions decision, but they're happy to kind of give you some feedback and kind of let you know where you are. Um, so we have, because <laughs> we have, we do have a, quite a large international student population um, at GW. Um, we have many students that are coming from all different parts of the world um, and, and being very successful in their studies. Um, we've had some students who have come um, from, um, from a lot of different backgrounds and are, are working very successfully within our programs. We have a pretty large international student population um, within our in, in interior design and architecture program um, that are, um, oops, sorry, my computer just glitched out real quick. Um, so specific, I can specifically think of a few examples within our interior architecture and design program. Um, you can pop on our website there and they have a couple of, um, of some of the, the older alumni um, success stories on there. Um, but students that are able to come into that program. So again, I mentioned before that our interior architecture and design program is a first professional program. So it's for students who have kind of made a little bit of a career shift and don't necessarily have a full background um, in design and architecture. Um, and we've had a student who um, graduated either, it was either two or three years ago, um, who was able to, throughout her internships, um, work with a lot of different companies. And she's actually gone back to, um, her, she's going back to Iran and was able to uh, work uh, with a couple of different firms and, and really kind of continue her career and going back home. We have a lot of students who are getting a lot of great experience within the states um, and going to places like LA and New York and Miami with some of these major, major, major design firms um, and are able to really expand their careers in ways that um, they, they, they didn't think was possible. Um, you know, we have 
um, GW has, again, a very large international student population. So I am blanking a little bit on any additional specific stories, unfortunately. Um, it is 6 a.m. over here. So, um, But uh, feel free, definitely feel free to reach out to me. And my contact information is here. Um, and I can definitely pass along some additional student names. If you're interested in any of our specific programs, I'm happy to help find students um, that can kind of talk to you a little bit more about being an international student at GW and being in an arts program and can talk to you a little bit more about that experience um, from their perspective um, and possibly a little more eloquently than I apparently can right now. And feel free to do that for other schools as well. Uh, you know, if you are if you're seriously considering studying at any of these schools, uh, they will be more than happy to help provide you with the names of students or the names of faculty members that can kind of talk to you about that experience. Um, you know, we have a really wonderful um, international services office where we are able to connect students, current students and prospective students with resources and people across our campus that can kind of help through that process or can just kind of talk about the process um, and what it's like to be on our campus uh, as an international student um, and what resources are available, what it's, you know, what things are really like, what your classes are really like. Um, you know, I can talk to you until I'm blue in the face about how the the how you know what the programs are doing and the sorts of things that they are. But I think it's also important to talk to students that are currently in the programs or who have just completed the program and hear from them kind of what their real life experience was, because they're the ones that are sitting in on those classes every day. They're working one on one with those faculty members um, and can give you um, some additional insights that maybe a faculty member or an admissions representative, um, you know, can't quite give you the same level of detail that they can. Any other questions? If you can't think of questions now, definitely feel free to reach out to me. Um, by my, the best email to get in touch with me is going to be gradccas at gwu.edu. Um, you can send any of those questions there. Again, I am happy to answer any specific questions about uh, George Washington University, Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, or our, our Corcoran School of the Arts and Design. Um, all the same place. <laughs> but um, I am happy to answer any specific questions about those programs or experiences or application process there. Um, I'm also happy to try to answer any kind of general questions about um, applying to uh, these types of programs. But if you have specific questions about a certain program at a certain school, definitely reach out to them um, and, and, and ask. And I know that they're going to be more than happy to, um, to help you out and to, to work with you through their process. Um, all right. Uh, thank you, Lindsay, for being with us, taking out time, waking up that early in the morning and uh, giving us that extremely informative presentation. Also, you were very patient with taking questions. So thank you again for that. Um, uh, we are going to stick around for a while longer. So in case any of the attendees have further questions, please feel free to type them onto the chat section and Lindsay will, I'm sure she'll be happy to take uh, a few more. Um, thank you again, everybody, for joining us today. Today's presentation has been recorded and it's going to be uh, fed on to our uh, YouTube channel sometime very soon and it's going to be available for further access. We are going to meet you again the coming week for the next week's uh, Friday webinar. The coming week, uh, we are going to be having a session on submitting a successful business school application. Uh, more details on that are going to be available on uh, our respective the, the respective centers Facebook pages. Um, with this, I would like to draw today's session to a close. Um, in case you have any other questions, quickly type them onto the chat section. Wait about a minute or two longer, maybe. So while we are waiting, Lindsay, do you have any uh, last minute tips for our uh, student applicants? So I think one thing that I that I maybe forgot to mention a little bit earlier um, 
you know, there are a lot of different types of schools that are going to be available to students that are looking for the arts. Um, obviously, George Washington University, we're a large research institution that has a fantastic school of art that's attached to it. Um, for some students, that's going to be the best of both worlds, and they're going to love having those additional resources. Um, one great way for students that are maybe not necessarily interested in going, attending a large university with an art program, but maybe want to go to a very art specific school um, is going to, specifically in, in the United States, is going to be to look at um, the independent art schools. Um, and there is a, a site called ACAD, which is uh, for, it's short for the Association of Independent Colleges of Art and Design. So if you're looking for a school that is just specifically art programs only, they tend to be a little bit smaller. Um, but very, very focused only on the arts. That's a great resource to use um, to, to look at and research schools and what's available. Um, their website is great. It's uh, ACAD, A-I-C-A-D, um, I believe it's .org, um, or you can do a, a, quick, uh, a quick search for, for ACAD or Association of Independent Colleges of Art and Design. Um, they have a great source on their website where you can filter based on program that you're interested in, based on level, based on part of the United States that you're interested in. Um, so that's a great resource uh, if, you're, if you are looking for just specifically an art and design school um, that isn't necessarily attached to a larger uh, university. All right. Um, okay, so I think this would be it. We could call it a day now. Thank you again, Dinsi, for the extremely fruitful session. We hope to be in touch with you and again host you in the near future for another session. Um, thank you again all the attendees for joining us today and for asking all of those questions. Um, and for the student attendees in particular, remember to reach out to uh, Education USA Center, any center in your vicinity for any US higher education admission center concern that you might have. Uh, thank you again. With this, I would like to draw this to an end. Thank you, everyone.